Hi guys and welcome to another edition of Advanced Woodcraft. In our first lesson we talked about how to speed roll a tarp for the fast break. In our second one we kind of refined that a little bit more and in the third one we talked about how to break the entire camp quickly and how to set up the camp quickly. Now we're going to talk about how to focus the camp. The whole idea is like Nez Monk said, we're going to the woods to smooth it, to make it as fluid and as easily done as possible for the max amount of enjoyment and the least amount of headache. So let us take going on a three or four day camp out and let me talk to you about how the mental process of how we work it to give ourselves a minimum headache and the maximum advantage. Okay, question number one, how long? How long are we gonna be out? Time, three days, okay? All right, that gives us something to base upon. My first thought, whenever I'm going to do this, is I'm gonna start with my consumables, which will be what I'm gonna eat, okay? So that means that I'm going to need, in that three-day time food, I'm going to need how many breakfast, how many lunch, how many supper, sorry for you northerners, dinner, and how many snacks, okay? So let's see three days I will eat breakfast on the way going to the woods stop grab a biscuit or something through a drive-thru okay so that don't need that so I'm gonna need a lunch I'm gonna need a supper and I'm going to get a lunch and a dinner and I'm going to need a snack okay lunch dinner snack for the second day I will need a breakfast lunch dinner snack for the last day, I will need a breakfast, lunch, snack, but no dinner, okay? So that means I'm going to need two breakfasts, middle day and third day, how many lunch? I'm going to need three lunches, how many dinners? I'm going to need two dinners, and how many snacks? I'm going to need three snacks. So I should plot my stuff accordingly. Now I'm going to do two breakfasts, okay? Beverages and all like that will work in there as well. But it's going to be two breakfasts. Is this something I got to cook or is this going to be a boil water and pour in? Okay? Let's say it's a boil water and pour in because boil water for the coffee, boil water to put into some instant breakfast type thing, meal, oatmeal let's say. Okay, all I need so far is a pot and my water ability. Three lunches. Lunches are going to be, well, it's going to be these snack things that you just take out and eat, a heat and eat, a, not a, uh, an MRE type thing where I don't have to heat it, I can just eat it as it is. It's good. Any of these require cooking? No. Okay, so if I did want to do a coffee in there, I could, I still got that, right? Okay, so I'm still water and boiler. Dinners, three din uh, two dinners. Any of these require any cooking beyond boiling water? Well, yes, this I want to pan fry. Okay, so now I need a skillet and I need a boiling pot. Okay, snacks, snacks don't require any above. So therefore, all of my cooking gear requirement is going to be something to eat off of We'll say a plate, a pot to boil water in, a skillet to fry in, a fork, and a spoon. That covers all of it, right? Straightforward, all I need. I don't need the full mess kit. I only need these two components side of it. Thing to fry with and thing to boil water with. 
Can I boil water in a U.S. Army mess kit? Yeah. Could I use that water to pour in and make the coffee and everything? Yeah. And then use that same pan to fry in? Yeah. So I could just tote one pan, right? See what I'm saying? First we plot out the gear. Then we find the cooking device needed for that gear. Okay. Water. I'm going to have some way of generating water around this time as far as filtering water, etc. So I'm going to say my grail that I'm going to be carrying. So that's got all my water needs. I've got water I can dip up to drink. I've got water that I can then pour into a cup to add some sort of flavors or whatever to have a beverage. I can also make coffee and things like teas and etc. Same way. So the grail will handle all the water needs. Okay. Now we have eliminated food. We have eliminated water. That's got my consumables down. Okay. Now that I've got that plotted out and set up to go. Now, three days. Okay. I'm going to be sleeping two nights. So let's say clothing. I have the set of clothing I'm going to wear in. Is it an environment where I'm going to be able to wear the same set of clothes all three days? If yes, great. I'll just need sleeping clothes. If not, I'm going to need to change. I'm going to have an additional set of clothes. So for the sake of this argument, we'll say we'll ranger roll one set, and then I'll have a set of, let's say, PJs, a T-shirt and a pair of pajama pants and fresh socks. That's what I'm going to put on when I go to bed. So PJs and one clothing. PJ and one roll. Okay, that's eliminated all my clothing right there. So thus far, I figured out how long, I figured out how many meals, I figured out the, the, what's going to be needed to prepare that meal, my water, my beverages and stuff like that will come in in the bulk foods, which I'll add in ad hoc as I need. My PJs and that. Now, let us start and go backwards. What I mean by that is I begin with me in my bed, whatever my bed is on this event. If I'm going to be sleeping on the ground, I've got my pad. I've got my sleeping bag, I've got my pillow, whatever. I use for a pillow a rolled up towel. It's multi-use in camp, and all I need is something just rolled it up behind my neck. So it's a bath towel, and that's all I need to sleep on. So I would need my towel, my sleeping bag, and my pad if I was ground pounding. If I'm hammocking my sleep gear, again, starting from the imagination that I'm laying in bed, I will need my hammock, my towel, which is going to be my pillow, and my sleeping bag. Right there. Those three. Now coming out one step, I'm going to need something over me. So that's my tarp. Okay? We've already talked about that. So now I need a tarp. Right there. Hammock, towel, sleeping bag, tarp. I'm going to want camp light, so I'm going to need a lantern. Lantern. Okay? Now, I'm just backpacking in. I'm not going to carry a chair for that. If I'm car camping in where it's a short distance, I would include a chair, maybe a little small folding table, just to make my life easier up underneath my tarp in case of inclement weather. Okay, now we're going to look at weather. Is it cold, wet, or warm? Sunny. Each one of those will change this equation. If it's going to be cold, then I'm going to need 
better clothing, thicker outerwear, etc. Cold, heavier sleeping bag. Maybe I don't want to be in a hammock. I'll now need an under quilt. So that would add to this gear list as necessary. What if it's going to be raining? Well then, is my tarp going to be adequate? And do I need additional, like a super light, ultra light rain set to put on me for the walking in? I have a pair of ultra light rain pants and an ultra light Anirondack rain jacket with hood that I can then put my hat, my hat, and my uh, rucksack on over my walk in. If I need a poncho or whatever, now's the time to plug that in. What is the weather? Okay, it's not cold and it's not wet. It is going to be warm and it's going to be sunny. Okay, maybe I need to include maybe some sunglasses. How about some stuff to keep me from getting sunburned, if that's going to be a factor. I'm out there three days. Bad sunburn can ruin your day, especially early in the season when you're not really accustomed to it anymore and the back of your neck gets burned and you're trying to sleep and it's just itching you and driving you crazy. Yeah take the time. How about insect repellent? See, this is the time to plug those in. What is the weather conditions, the atmosphere I'm facing right now? My gear should apply to that. Okay? So I have worked out how long I've worked out my food needs, I've worked out my gear needs for taking care of that, my water taken care of, my clothing needs taken care of, my shelter needs of having where I'm sleeping, what I'm gonna to need to stay warm, how I'm gonna be comfortable, my tarp, and I've got that. Do I need a chair? Is it somewhere it's a short term where I can just pick up and tote my chair along with me because I'm going from the camp, from the car to the camp, two, 300 yards, maybe a mile, one of them ultra light little chairs slung up, do I need one of them? A little stool or whatever, or am I car camping? Again, you plug this in, see? All right, I have now got that. What am I missing? I've set up my whole camp now, haven't I? I've got a hammock to sleep in. I've got an underquilt on it. If it's cold, I don't. If it's not, I have a towel that I'm going to use for multiple uses in camp and roll it up at night for a pillow underneath my head. I've got my PJs to put on to have bone dry clothing at night. No matter what the conditions are, I'll be dry. I have whatever clothing I need planned out to cover my needs again. Rain gear, do I need it? And I put in each piece and component. Notice I ain't talked about how I'm carrying it yet. We ain't to that stage yet. First, we determine how long, we determine what we need, then we determine the weather. That may change the gear as we just talked about. And then finally, we're going to talk about this is everything right here. This is where you also put in your sundries of the extra set of medicine that you need to carry. Your toothbrush, toothpaste, your wet ones, a wipe so you can take a little whore bath before you go to bed. Whatever. Toilet paper. All of those little sundries you need to plug in now. Little small things. Once you've got the pile of everything, the food and all of it, now you look at carrying this right here. This goes now to what size rucksack or pack, depending on. If it's cold, everything's bulky. My sleeping bag is bigger and bulkier. I'm wearing bigger, bulkier layers. I'm probably going to include, instead of PJs, it's going to be long handles, polypros or something. All of that adds bulk. So I, now I need a bigger pack, an actual backpack, to carry it. The weight is not that much, but the bulk is. It's warm and sunny, and it's going to be clear. I can greatly reduce down to a smaller rucksack. Now, can I? Because I don't have to carry the big and the bulky okay by doing this mental process of this checklist or your own come up with your own 
in what order and then once I do that I mentally start with me laying let's say in my hammock and I think of okay I'm in my hammock so I got the hammock I need my pillow which is my towel I have my sleeping bag how cold is it gonna be okay this bag the bigger bag okay what am I sleeping in PJs well it's cold I want to change that out for this it's like you do a mental shift okay now I set up my tarp which of my tarps is the best choice for these conditions do I want the big one or can I get by with the the hex cut that's smaller and lighter because it's just gonna be sunny and nice nights I just gotta keep the dew off of me or do I need to carry the big uh, hot tent because I've got to be totally enclosed because of wind and weather and etc see those things I now plug in then I get the correct bag and I load the bag now how do I load it my cooking stuff my food and that stuff goes in the bottom except for the snack and quick eat that's gonna come to the top or go in the haversack or something to be a quick grab on the trail okay clothing like I talked about goes in the very bottom because I'm only gonna change clothes once a day unless I go for a dunk and then I got to so I'm only gonna change once a day so that's gonna be in the bottom that's the floor that's my deep storage next I come up in my pack and there's my food and my pots and my etc then I come up what's the next thing well, now we're got here is our um, sleeping bag what's on top of that my hammock what's on top of that the tarp what's on top of that the snack or whatever I'm gonna put on the very top that way whenever I open up my haversack uh, my rucksack excuse me when I open it up what's on top the first thing I need well I'm just stopping for a break well there's the snacking stuff see I take it out and you know we hang out we talk I eat my little snack etc I get to camp hook it up to the tree I open it up what's the first thing coming out the tarp if in case it's inclement weather whatever what's the second thing there's my hammock there it goes next is my sleeping bag that comes out out comes the towel that's going to be my neck pillow that's going to be draped over out comes my sleeping clothes they get dripped over the line right here so it's one two three four you see what I'm saying like we talked about in the last episode it's choreography I'm not struggling because I've set my pack, my gear, all my resources up. See? So that I know how many breakfasts do I need? How many lunches do I need? How many dinners do I need? How many snacks do I need? I know what I got in there. I don't know how many times I've gone camping, and you probably have too with somebody, and they start pulling 40 bags out of their, their bag, and I don't know if I want to eat this or not, or I don't know, and they brought all this food. They brought a week's worth of food, and y'all are only camping out one night. Well, I don't know if I'm going to want this, I don't know if I want that. You're not going to McDonald's. You know, pick a meal. It should be something that you tried at home before you ever went and decided you really like that. What do I need to prepare these meals? Well, everything in this scenario, the grail provided the water and the uh, pot, a small skillet and a small pot is all I needed. I didn't have to take the entire mess kit, just the two, or I could use just one pan, U.S. Army mess kit pan, in fact, just the bottom. Just the actual pan, leave the top at home. Could I get by with just a couple of plastic spoons and force to lower weight? Absolutely. See? And of course, a trash bag in here so I can haul out any garbage or anything I generate. So I haul it in, I haul it out. Everything is set up in a fluid motion. Everything is organized. So when it's time for me to eat dinner, and we've been sitting over here talking and man, I'm getting hungry. I can walk back over. My rucksack is tied to the tree. When I open it up, what's in there? My food and stuff in my pots are on top. 
because I've already taken out all the shelter and stuff that was already stacked, right? So I reach in and I pull out my heated up that I'm gonna immersion heat or I'm gonna boil water and pour into. There's my pot. I take my grill, which is already out because it's on the outside of the pack. And I'm gonna fill the pot up. I'm gonna put it on my little stove or use the campfire and I'm gonna heat it up. I'm gonna eat my chow. When I get done, all the garbage goes back in the bag, wads up and goes into my little personal small garbage bag. It's probably gonna be tied on the outside of the pack or on the side of a tree that I can grab real quick when we're pulling out. You see, it's fluid. That is how to smooth it. It's not how light the gear is. You can have heavy gear and just make everybody look like they're struggling compared to you. It's the choreography, choreography and thinking this out ahead of like dancing, like music. What are my meals? When are my meals going to be? What do I need for my meals? So that I'm not doing a lot of muss and fuss. It's all smooth. And that's the mark of a woodsman. Like I learned watching these old woodsmen, and I especially learned from Francis McGowan, old grouch, was how fluid and smooth. He never seemed to be struggling. He never seemed to be lost or out of place or whatever. It was as if he knew when that hand went into that rucksack exactly what his hand was going to land on and that when he pulled it out he was not surprised. He was never having to look in the pack and dig and dig and dig. He would just reach down and he pulled it out. He knew what was on top. That's how he loaded it. Hope you've enjoyed this guys. If you have please leave a uh, comment down there and like, share, and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.